So here I have a joint, right? It's a mesh, so it's a little messy, but that's fine because I'm going to just use that in Grasshopper. And what I really need from it are key points on it in order to orient it. So I'm going to open up Grasshopper. And so we're going to start linking things of this model, right? Not just the whole model, but key points on it on how we want it to orient to and attach to itself. So we can kind of replicate this geometry throughout a curve or throughout a pattern and so on. Um, does anyone remember the type of components in Grasshopper that only hold or carry data? Panel. Panel? Panel is for, for, yeah, to visualize, yes. But I'm talking about strictly geometry. You would go under the parameters tab here, and under the geometry category here, we can set things from Rhino. So since this is a mesh, I'll go ahead and pick the mesh component, and I'll drop it on the canvas. Now, again, the yellow message means that it's missing information, right? It says floating parameter mesh failed to collect data. So if I right click on it, on any one of these that has a black hexagon with a white symbol that's meant to hold geometry, I can right click it and I can set one mesh, right? It's then going to prompt me into the Rhino window and I can select the mesh there. So now it turns red because if I hide it, I'll be able to see that that's the previewed mesh here in Grasshopper, right? So what I'll do next is where do I need these to attach to each other, right? So the way that this joint works is that these need to meet each other, right? The center points here would meet each other, but then they have to also face each other. So I would have to rotate, or rotate 3D. The axis of rotation would be, I'm really out of it today. There, there. Right, and so then, do I have it at a wrong angle? It's really hard to wrap my head around. But basically what we're trying to do is to get this, these three triangular faces, right, to meet these triangular faces at a certain angle so that they can fit into each other, right? So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna first set this point right here, right? Where they all intersect, because that's where I'm gonna look at for connection. So I can type here point, right? I can then cross all these together I can bring that in here as a curve, right? Now if I wanted the center of that triangle, right? Because that triangle is connecting those edges because those edges can't touch, otherwise another joint wouldn't slide into it, right? So how can I get that center of the triangle to get the true center of that plane? Grasshopper is already connected to the, the, the piece? Or no? Yeah, Grasshopper is uh, reading the geometry of the piece. Right. Like that point you just did, it's already uh, linked to that? The point is not. So the, the mesh is, right? Because if I select it, it'll select green, right? That triangle is not. I'll bring this triangle in here. Oh, and I brought this triangle in here as a curve. To bring it in, you just select it here and then just click on it. Yeah, so I can either select in Rhino first and right click on the component and hit set one curve. So since that's already selected, it did it automatically. Or if I don't have anything selected in Rhino, I can right click here, set one curve, and then select the curve I want to bring in. Right. So now that I have that triangle in there, how can I get that center of the triangle within Grasshopper? Is there a component that says for center? Okay, for center. So I could do a search maybe first, right? For center. And I get this one. This one's from a plugin, so you're not going to find this one. But do we see one in that list that's going to work for the triangle? polygon center. So I can bring that in. It gives me three types of mathematical centers, but in this case they all overlap. 
So I can use any one of these. So now this has become, let me plug in bifocals. So this has become the point at which I can orient this joint to itself, right? Now, it, rather than continue to deconstruct this geometry for what I need, right? I'm going to bring out the function that I need to do in order to orient the geometries together, right? Or to place one on the other. So then I know what else I need to extract from that joint or that geometry in order to make that process work, right? So who has an idea of a component that could work to do that? Huh? Rotate, yeah, but I've said it a bunch of times and it's actually straightforward on a component. Orient. So there's straight up a component called orient. Right, orient an object. Orientation is sometimes called chase basis transformation. It allows for remapping of geometry from one axis to another, right? So that's what I'm going to grab. So here, I'll hover over geometry, right? And hovering over the input that says geometry is going to tell me the base geometry, right? That's going to be oriented. So I'll plug in the mesh there. Next, source. I hover over source and it tells me initial plane, right? It's one locally defined value, world x, y. So it's not only a point, but it's also an orientation of x and y, right, that I need to give it in order to determine that orientation. So that source would be this point, right? But if I see here, if I turn this into a simple x, y plane, I see now that the plane is flat, right? The plane isn't um, like in the same orientation as the surfaces are, right? So what can I do there? I really just need to grab whatever direction this face is, right, directed to. So this is going to be a lot quicker in Rhino if I just trace this face, right? Select that curve and make it a planar surface. Right. Why? Because I can now bring in that surface into Rhino. And now from that surface, I'm trying to extract the direction in which it's facing. Right? So I would go to surface here, the tab surface. Now I'm not going to go into freeform because that's to create a surface. Primitive looks like creating 3D shapes, right? Util is modification, right? However, analysis would deconstruct that surface for me and would get me what I want, which is the direction in which that's facing. So under analysis, I would look here, and I it's not straightforward in text, but if I go to the bottom here, I see one that has a symbol that's a surface with a point on it and an arrow projected from that point on the surface away from the surface, right? And I see here it says evaluate surface. Evaluate local surface properties at a UV coordinate. All that UV coordinate means is that I need to give it a point that's on the surface, right? And it's then going to read where that point is on the surface and what kind of curvature or what kind of uh, direction that point has. So I'll bring this in, evaluate surface. And so I plug in surface here. That's the one that we're evaluating. And next, the point, I can use area to get the center of the surface. Right? And now I have the plane onto which, right, I need to kind of paste another object of these onto it. Um, wait, uh, why do you need the area? Because area is giving me two outputs. It's giving me a numerical output here of area. Right? And then it's giving me a centroid. And it says here, uh, area centroid of geometry. Mm -hmm. And we can see here that it has the, the white symbol in, inside of the black hexagon. And I can always consult my parameters tab to see what kind of data that is. So I can see it's a point. All right? But who's lost so far? <laughs> OK. Why don't you guys ask questions? Okay, please do. I mean, I think the thing is, it seems pretty straightforward when he's doing it, but if I was trying yeah. to do this, there was no way I'd be Okay, this is, but this is, exactly. it's really for you guys to adopt the grasshopper logic. This area thing, finding the center from the area, that's just literally grasshopper. 
Like it is unfortunate. I wish there is a center. Uh, no, but there is no. There is there isn't one. And you always need to go to area to find out the center for a geometry. So that's always going to be the case. If you end up any time, you need the center. That's how you're going to be doing. Except for a polygon, they did it differently. Does that make sense? So try, try. You know, like don't be too hard on yourself. It's not that complicated. Try break it down, and if it doesn't make sense, ask. Who spent one hour on Grasshopper since the last time I did the workshop? Okay. That's all you gotta do. Like, it's the consistency, right? So, I'll put up the videos that we're doing, and, well, we have the schedule of the lab now on the door, and we have the schedule of the wood shop. I haven't mentioned this, but the training for the wood shop is also open. And the Grasshopper workshops are gonna be Tuesday and Fridays here at noon. So, if you need additional help besides what we're doing in class, come in during those times. And I'll help you out specifically on whatever you need help with. So, yeah, the recording's on Canvas, right? On the Dropbox. 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 Yeah. So, again, to go over this a little bit, right? I'm simply bringing in different aspects of the model into Grasshopper by setting it into these components. Do we understand that? Yeah? Okay. So, then I'm just deconstructing what I need in order to get. Uh, the data that I need in order to orient this properly, right? Like in my head, the final function is I want to be able to grab this joint at this particular spot, right? And then copy it to itself, right, onto that pot, onto that spot, but in the proper orientation that it's supposed to be, right? Like that's the ultimate goal. So you can start from the, from the final resort, result, right? Which in this case would be orient. And I'm basically working backwards from what I need to make that happen. So the input that I need to orient one ge this geometry to itself, the first thing I need is the geometry to be oriented, right? Which I have already because I just need to bring in that mesh. The next thing I need in order to do that orientation is to grab the, the source point, right? Where am I grabbing this geometry from to then place it somewhere else, right? Which is gonna be this point that I just found out, right? How did I find that point? I went into Rhino and I drew a little triangle here to connect those three, right? I brought it in as a curve. It's a closed curve, right? And it's planar, meaning it's flat, which makes it a polygon, right? So when looking for centers, right, or when analyzing curves, again, Grasshopper is a process of construction and deconstruction, right? So I created a curve in Rhino because it was faster for me to do it that way but I'm deconstructing it in Grasshopper to get very specific data from it. And in this case, if I were to go to curve analysis, that's where I can find uh, whether I can test whether to see if a curve is closed. I can get the closest point to a curve. And if you look through analysis, you can see here polygon center, right? Find the center point for a polyline. So as I explained in the interface part, it's really a process of going through, I mean, you could always search, right? You can always try a search to see if there's a command or a function that fits with keywords, right? What you're trying to do. But if not, you're, you, first you need to identify, okay, what, am I try, what I'm trying to do right now, is it building up to a geometry or do I first need to extract something from what I have right now to then keep going, right? That's gonna determine whether you go into analysis or if you go into primitive or anything else that creates geometry. Do we understand that at least? That's the mentality you gotta have. Can you repeat that again? Yeah, so you first identify whether you're constructing geometry or whether you're breaking down the geometry that you have, right? From there, you just look for the category of the geometry you're working with. If it's curves, you would go into curves. If it's surfaces, you go into surfaces. And then you can check out, okay, if I'm trying to extract data from a surface, I would go to the analysis tab or analysis category, right? If I'm trying to create a surface, I would look for free form or primitive, right? Util is usually modifications to the geometry. But to, in order to understand why these things are placed where they are, you really just need to spend a little time looking through it. Um, again, if the search through the canvas doesn't necessarily give you the result that you want, right? And remember that these categories, like under free form, it's split into further uh, sections, right? So we can see here we have making surfaces from points, then making surfaces from curves, right? Then we have making surfaces from uh, directions or vectors. 
patching, and then finally piping or sweeping, right? So as long as you understand like the framework that exists for the tools that are available to you, you can always kind of like move around and find what it is that you need to apply. I'm going very practical, very direct, specifically for orientation, but we're just trying to reinforce the idea of there's outputs and inputs, right? And we're just trying to like figure out how we can make this flow, yeah? So we only have five more minutes technically, so I'm gonna, again, just go through it so you can kind of understand the process of breaking something down to build something else, right? And then I would encourage you to rewatch the first video. Um, we spent a lot of time discussing during this one, but I'll put it up if it helps you, cool. I realized last time I didn't give you the link I was gonna give you for the written part that's gonna help you get started on a lot of things, so we'll give that to you at the end of the class this time. Okay, so now that I have this plane, right? Well, we we'll, we'll see here that after evaluating that surface, although it's giving me the proper plane, we can see here that the grid here is faced exactly like this area of the joint is, right? However, the center point of that evaluation is way up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, go into vector because that's where my plane settings are. And under plane, I'm gonna look for something that's gonna allow me to make the center point have the plane orientation that I evaluated. Make sense? So I can basically snap the plane back to that center. So I'll look here for plane origin. Change the origin point of a plane, right? Very straightforward. So I'll put that here. The origin, right, would be the center point here from the center of, nope, sorry, from the center of the curve, which is the triangle. And then this would be the plane, right? Nope, would this be it? Frame, this is it, yes. Okay, so we understand, right? We see this green point right here. My evaluation of the surface gave me the, the orientation of that plane, but it gave, me, it gave it to me with a center point on that plane way out here. So all I'm doing is I'm taking that orientation and I'm snapping it back to the center of that triangle by using plane origin to change where that plane is. So you're not moving the plane to align it to the point. You're just changing the origin. Exactly. Like here, this one still considers the plane to be up here. But this one considers it has snapped or has com combined the data of this point and this plane to generate a plane at that point. And why not just move it? I could also move it. Right, but I could do it at either Rhino or in Grasshopper. But in this way, it doesn't matter how I calculate um, that surface, right? No matter what surface I evaluate, okay. it'll always snap to that center point, yeah. right? So the inputs can be interchangeable. Mm -hmm. So that becomes my source plane, right? Now, there's a default target plane, right? So it's snapping that geometry to that plane right there. So I'd like to show you how to snap it there directly and how it's supposed to be, but we ran out of time. So what I'm basically gonna show you is if I do, if I set up a grid, I'm gonna do a random grid right now by populating this region with 3D points, right? I can have all these points be targets. So I'm basically orienting that joint in all those points. So this is simply to illustrate that you can devise a system where you're basically grabbing that joint at that point at a specific orientation and you can replicate it through an entire pattern, right? And if you set parameters like uh, generate this grid of points, right, and have the points spaced out so and so, right, and have them fit and have them change direction and so and so, you can basically just populate that field of points with the joint that you created. Right? So it's a combination, again, like we explained in the first class, behaviors. Right? What sort of behavior can you construct that you can then apply or run with your joint? Right? 
And maybe your joint doesn't happen straight away. Maybe first you're just intersecting planes and extrusions, and then you're having them removed from each other, right? Cutting out from each other. So again, I guess we go back to this idea of bottom up or top down approach, right? Um, but yeah, any questions? No? I have a question for you guys. So if it's a grasshopper workshop, aren't you supposed to be using